Uh, essentially, the rank set sampling process gives us a method to use our professional judgment while we're out in the field and can also lead to a lot fewer samples, um, which can be advantageous if, if the uh, analytical costs are high for a given approach. There's a few fundamental things you need to know first. Is Number one, we have to have some parameter that we're able to make a relative ranking as to the, uh, the item of interest. If say we're looking at trees in the forest and we want to be able to rank them according to the larger diameter trees, we can quickly look and, and tell which tree is the uh, larger of three, perhaps. We could do that same approach for radiological surveys. For example, if cesium-137 is our contaminant of concern, I can go to a location, take a measurement on the soil with a sodium iodide detector, and the relative response of that detector will relate to the relative concentration of the contaminant of the soil. We're not trying to get a correlation, just a relative uh, knowledge of what the concentration would be. We can use the same thing for hard to detect radionuclides, uh, taking a beta measurement or an alpha measurement. Both uh, situations have been shown in a laboratory setting to work. Before we can apply the RSS, we just need to educate ourselves and know a few key parameters. Um, that is the number of samples that's required. And the approach we'll discuss involves starting out with a MARSUM, uh, one of the non-parametric tests, sign test rule, Cox and Rank sum test, determining how many samples we need using that sample set to form our subunits for the rank set sampling. Then we're going to have to establish a set size. The set size we usually refer to with the variable M and that is simply how many locations we're going to rank in a uh, given set. And typically you want to keep the set size between two and five. We like to use three and those are just low, medium, and high relative to the count rate that we're seeing in the field. Uh, the other item is the number of ranking cycles and the number of ranking cycles is a function of the set size and the total number of samples that were required um, based on our statistical analysis. So for example, if we determine that we require 12 samples for a laboratory analysis, then and our set size is going to consist of three locations that are ranked in each cycle then we can quickly see there'll be four cycles, or R, are required for a total of 36 rank locations. So those 36 locations are then distributed in our survey area, and they're distributed in a random fashion, and they're also randomly distributed based on the cycle and set. So then for cycle one, set one, we're going to go take three measurements, we're going to rank them as low, medium, or high, and we're going to collect the sample from the lowest location. Set two of cycle one is the same, same scenario. We take measurements from those three locations that are associated with cycle one, set two, and we'll collect the sample with the second, or the medium highest radioactivity level in cycle uh, one set three, we take measurements from those three locations and again we sample, in this case, the highest location. Then we're ready to begin cycle two, which will have the three sets associated with it as well and we just repeat that until we've looked at each of the 36 locations and from that 36 locations we get our 12 samples. Now I think we're ready to to look at an actual uh, field study and use this to determine how many samples we need to collect for a hard to detect radionuclide in soil. In this case, our contaminant is technetium-99. Okay, we're gonna walk through the rank set sampling process, um, applying it to a MARSUM final status survey situation involving hard to detect radionuclides. 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to plan the required number of samples for a MARSOM survey based on the, the information we have. So if we go through the data quality objectives, we have these up on the board here. In our example, we're going to be using Tech 99 as our hard to detect contaminant. We're going to use the rank set sampling approach when we have a hard to detect radionuclide in soil and there's no surrogate relationship available. So up on the board, we're going to use an example of Tech 99 as our contaminant in soil. The DCGL for the Tech 99 is 19.6 peak curies per gram. That was established during our dose modeling. Uh, we also have an area factor table up on the board that we took care of. We're going to be using this approach in class one survey units. Uh, if we look at the area factor table, we can see we've got uh, DCGL EMCs for 10 square meters up to 200 square meters. And so that will come into play similar to a required scan MDC. The other uh, inputs that we have available are the survey unit mean concentration that we've collected from both characterization and remedial action support surveys, and we also have the variability of our contaminant in the survey unit. The mean concentration in this case is 9.6 peak curies per gram, and the uncertainty is approximately 5 peak curies per gram. Um, so going ahead and setting up our DQOs, we're going to use the sign test in this case. The contaminant uh, is not present in background and our alpha error is going to be set at 0.5 and our beta error is also going to be set at 0.5. Our relative shift using our mean concentration, our uncertainty in the DCGL results in a relative shift of 2. Going to table 5.5 in Mars, something we see we need 15 samples under this scenario to demonstrate compliance with the release criteria. However, we're in a class one survey unit, therefore we're required to um, also evaluate the soil for hot spots of concern. Typically that's done through the use of required scan MDC. Uh, Tech 99 being a pure beta emitter, we have no gamma signature, therefore we're unable to establish a scan MDC. So in this case, we're going to apply rank set sampling. We have our 15 samples. Um, we have to do an elevated measurement comparison. If this was a normal uh, Marsum survey and we had an actual and required scan MDC, we could go through that exercise. However, with the Tech 99, we do not. So what we have to do is determine a, a priori hotspot size of concern, and there's several ways you can go about doing that. Uh, one suggested approach would be to use the characterization data and perhaps calculate a upper confidence limit, uh, either at the 95 or 99% confidence interval, and that should give you some idea of the maximum size hotspot that could exist on your site. So for this particular site, we had um, 74 characterization samples, and when we, once we evaluated that data, we found we had a 99% upper, upper confidence level of 954 picocuries per gram. The 95% upper confidence level was around 750. Uh, we are electing to use the 99% upper confidence level because it re requires a tighter sample spacing. So once we go to our area factor table, we can interpolate um, in that table and then we'll find that the 954 peak curies per gram equates to a sample spacing of 17, about 17 and a half square meters. And so then our um, required number of samples, if we assume this is a 2,000 square meter survey unit, would be 115. So if this were a, a normal Marsum survey and because we did not have a actual scan MDC that met the required scan MDC levels, we would end up having to collect 115 samples. But what we're going to do is we're going to use rank set sampling to reduce that value. And that's going to reduce the number of samples required by about 60%. So 
we're going to take each one of our um, Marsum FSS survey locations, there's 15 recall from our DQOs, we're going to establish those as a rank set sampling subunit and we're going to determine first of all whether we have the capability to rank technetium in soil using a, a standard uh, uh, beta detection instrument, handheld instrument such as a gas proportional or a beta scintillator or even a uh, a GM detector and can we rank a uh, technetium at the levels that we're talking about could potentially be present in the soil and in this case the uh, maximum we feel could be there would be 954 but we need to be able to go much lower than that um, so that we can adequately rank all of these locations and we can do this ranking for beta energies beginning at about uh, 200 KeV beta max and above. And the way the ranking goes, we're going to have a minimum of one cycle in each Marsum sample subunit. The, the samples will be collected from each of the cycle and set locations and for each set we'll collect a 100 gram sample of the soil or an aliquot of the, uh, the sample location. We'll, we'll place that soil in a thin layer in a re reproducible geometry then we'll perform a one minute count with our detector and we'll record the data. And we will rank three locations, randomly distributed locations. For set one, we'll rank them. We'll do a beta measurement on each sample and we'll collect the location that exhibited the lowest count rate. From set two, there will also be three samples randomly collected. We'll collect the sample exhibiting the medium beta activity and from set three we'll collect again three samples perform a beta measurement and collect the sample exhibiting the highest and the advantage this gives us is it gives us a much better estimate of the mean concentration both for that small subunit and when we combine the other 15 subunits we'll have a much greater sample density We'll have a much higher probability of detecting hot spots. Within each of the cycles and sets, say for example, you are working on set one of a given cycle, and in set one, recall, we collect the sample with the lowest count rate, which by theory would also have the lowest concentration. If for some reason a hot spot was detected within that subgroup we would go ahead and collect that sample we wouldn't just ignore it but we would collect it as a judgmental sample and it would be evaluated against the DCGL EMC criteria and this depends on our minimum ranking capability or MRC and also what our DCGL EMC but at a minimum we'll have one cycle three sets which will give us nine ranking locations per Marsum FSS sample location. Or in the end, we'll have a total of 45 samples rather than the 115. So, once we have this plan ready, um, we'll go ahead and lay out our RSS locations within each of the 15 subunits. So each subunit will get nine locations We'll go mark those out in the field, collect our samples, do the ranking, and then submit those samples to the laboratory. It's just a demonstration of the technique and, and how the, the results will match up. We have the actual data. These, these were spike samples that we were using in our example. And location 1-1-2 had 474 counts, the concentration was 100. 
Location 1-1-3 had 538 counts. It had the medium activity level of 250 picocuries per gram, TEC 99, also the, the medium count rate. In location 1-1-1, the beta count rate was 1,132 and it had 1,000 picocuries per gram as the actual TEC 99 concentration. So this was indeed uh, the cycle one, set one, so we were collecting the location exhibiting the lowest count rate, but if this situation were to actually occur in the field, we would of course collect the sample from one location 1-1-1, one -one which had the highest beta count rate as a judgmental sample, and to ensure uh, we were correctly identifying and quantifying hotspots of concern.